Honestly, it seems like sometimes every single quarterback that plays for a big time program is anointed the savior, a future Heisman candidate, or a future NFL player. It's unbelievably common to hear all these phrases tossed around, and the subject of today's video is the perfect example of it. Coming out of high school, Nikosi Perry was deemed the savior of Miami football, some were talking about how he could be the next Heisman winner for the Hurricanes, and was all in all expected to save the program. Unfortunately, after just a couple of games, Perry didn't end up working out, transferred away, and did not hear his name called in the 2023 NFL Draft. Obviously, there's a lot more to the story, but in today's video, we're going to revisit his career. We're going to talk about the insane rise of Nikosi Perry, why Jameis Winston was super high on him, why Miami fans made him the savior, and what ultimately happened to him. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Nkosi Perry. Going back in time, competition was at the roots of Nkosi's love for football. He fell in love with competition, playing everything from arcade game to youth sports. He said, quote, For me, I've always been super competitive. Whether it was foosball, table tennis, or basketball, I just always wanted to be the best. When I started playing football with some of my friends, I also started playing with my older brother, and he's six years older than me. I think when I got to play with people my own age, it was a lot easier for me. I couldn't find a whole lot more about his early years, but eventually, he would arrive at Vanguard High School in Acala, Florida, and the staff believed he was the next big thing. He'd be joined by future Mizzou star and fourth-round draft pick Tyree Gillespie there, but Perry needed someone to look up to. Growing up, he didn't have much of a father figure. His coach took it upon himself to be that for him. He said, quote, We played basketball together almost every day. We'd lift weights all the time, and that kid really didn't have a father figure, so I was one of those guys that was there for him. Eventually, Nkosi would blossom into a star, and by the time his junior season had passed, he had crossed into elite territory. He eventually broke Dante Culpepper's single season record there, as he threw for 2,532 yards and 33 touchdowns. They reached the regional finals for the first time since 2010, and he also ran for 287 yards and 11 touchdowns on the ground. As a senior, his numbers dropped a bit to 1,700 yards and 24 touchdowns, but he was still the best QB in school history, and the hype for him was only growing. Where was he going to go? Well, early on, he picked Miami. At the time, Al Golden was the coach, and it's crazy how long this guy has been in the college football media sphere. Eventually, though, he reopened his recruitment when he was fired, and when Mark Rick came in, Perry was the top player on his board. Eventually, Nikosi reaffirmed his commitment to the Canes, and then he was proclaimed the savior of the program. Something I came across in my research that was pretty interesting is that it was reported that Perry was actually the number one player on Miami's entire recruiting board. Not quarterback, but number one. In anticipation of his arrival at Miami, Perry skipped his life of video games, Snapchat, malls, and other things that teenagers like to do, and decided to ramp up his time doing quarterback drills. He was trying to get better and better, and after that, he'd go to the weight room and get stronger. He truly wanted to be great at Miami, and even spent time working with Jameis Winston. After those two were found to be working out, you could say the hype for Perry was growing even more. The one concern about his game, though, was that some scouts were worried he would not be able to read complex coverage schemes or identify blitz packages. Fans don't care about that stuff, though, as Miami fans were anticipating his arrival, and it was for good reason. His high school coach said, quote, He's a kid that can play. He's a leader, and he's a kid you'll find has a lot of skills at the quarterback spot. He can do run-pass option, his decision-making is outstanding, he knows how to read a defense, and when he throws the ball, it's so relaxed. It's something that I can't describe, and it's like something he's been doing his whole life. Playing quarterback was like him learning to walk. Overall, in his career at Vanguard, he finished with 5,127 yards, 64 touchdowns, 494 rushing yards, and 20 rushing scores. What did the scouts have to say? One said, quote, Perry is tall and thin at 6 foot 3 and a half, and he has a good arm and is athletic. He's frequently seen using his legs to extend plays, and while his stats did decline off his award-winning junior season, that was because his team routinely blew out their opposition, causing Perry and the other starters to rarely play in the second half. I guess that makes a lot of sense. According to 24-7 Sports, Perry was a four-star recruit, the number seven dual threat quarterback, and the 199th best player in the class of 2017, and I believe ESPN had him listed as a top 100 recruit. Either way, he had a considerable amount of hype going into Miami, and how would he end up doing? Well, Perry would end up arriving in 2018, and many wanted him to be the starter going into the season. His high school coach agreed, and thought he'd be ready to play right away. Coach Rick compared him to guys such as Charlie Ward, Deshaun Watson, and Lamar Jackson, and that really did mean something. He ended up being in a ferocious quarterback battle with Malik Rozier, but at the end of the day, Rozier won the job. 
but just over a month into the 2018 season, Perry took the starting job from Malik Rozier, and now his time had really come. He ended up throwing for 224 yards and three touchdowns against Florida International, and then had the game that made him famous. Against Florida State, the Canes were down big, but Perry threw four touchdown passes and ended up helping them beat their arch rival. At this moment, everyone thought Perry was the next big thing, but throughout the rest of the season, he bounced around between starter and backup, and besides a three touchdown performance against Virginia Tech, really didn't do a whole lot. He then also got into some trouble. Before the pinstripe bowl, one of his old Snapchats was leaked, and I'm not gonna talk about it, and you can look it up if you want, but it did not make him look very good. Hopefully he ended up learning from the issue, but as a freshman, he threw for 1,089 yards and five touchdowns. Going into 2019, Manny Diaz had now taken over as the head man, but he decided to roll with another freshman quarterback. His name was Jaron Williams. It seemed as if the Perry hype was already done, but Jaron Williams would struggle and got hurt, and Perry was eventually put in. In a very insane game against Virginia Tech, he came in, threw for 422 yards and four touchdowns, and almost helped them come back and win. Unfortunately, they didn't, and from there, he'd once again rotate between the bench and starting role. He combined for five touchdowns against Virginia and Georgia Tech, but would later be on the bench for the remainder of the season. As a sophomore, he finished with 993 yards, eight touchdowns, and two picks. Going into 2020, it was going to be now or never for Nikosi. Unfortunately, he never got a chance as they brought in Derek King from Houston and Perry just had to be a backup. He did throw for a touchdown against Florida State, but would finish the season with 348 yards and three touchdowns. After four years with the program, he had been wildly disappointing. He had two really insane games, but he did play under two different head coaches, and in total appeared in 24 games, started nine, and completed 52% of his passes for 2,500 yards and 24 touchdowns. It wasn't terrible, but he decided to enter the transfer portal. Ultimately, when he chose his new school, there were two factors that were important to him, staying close to his girlfriend and child, and playing for a coach with experience. He ended up going with Willie Taggart, as he decided to transfer to Florida Atlantic. He ended up beating out their last year starter, Nick Tronti, and became the starter in 2021 for the Owls. He had a couple of big games, including over 300 yards and four touchdowns against Georgia Southern, 329 yards and three touchdowns against Florida International, and 328 yards and two touchdowns against Middle Tennessee. All in all, he was pretty decent. He threw for 2,771 yards with 20 touchdowns and seven picks. Coach Willie Taggart was really proud of him. He said, quote, it doesn't take much more than a Google search to tell you that maturity and mental clarity have not always been Perry's strong suit. That being said, observers of the Florida Atlantic program have noticed a massive change in Perry over the last year. Because of the extra year of eligibility, Perry decided to come back for 2022, and he'd make NIL history. He signed an agreement with a beer company, and apparently that was the first alcohol company to ever endorse an NCAA athlete through NIL. That was kind of cool, I guess. In 2022, he would return as a starter, and once again had a couple of big games. He had five touchdowns against Ohio, three touchdowns against Southeastern Louisiana, three touchdowns and a near upset on the road against Purdue, and then three touchdowns and a win over UAB. In total, he finished with 25 touchdowns, five picks, and six more rushing scores. Perry was hoping for a chance to play in the NFL, and while some thought he could maybe be a late round pick, ultimately he went undrafted. I'm sure he's gonna do his best to try to make it in the league, but if the NFL does not work out for him, his plan involves being in the tech industry. He obtained an MBA in criminal justice and said, quote, I definitely plan on going to play for a lot more years of my life, but if I don't, I want to get into cybersecurity because I have a criminal justice degree. I'm definitely rooting for Nkosi, and he truly has had a crazy career. He was once anointed the savior and a potential Heisman candidate for Miami, had a couple of insane games for the Canes, and then unfortunately got stuck behind other quarterbacks and was never given any consistency. It always seemed that his job was on the line, and as quickly as he was put into the starting lineup, he was always taken out. That's kind of what happened to Miami quarterbacks over the last few years, and I'm glad he got a chance to be consistent at Florida Atlantic. He had two pretty good seasons there, seemingly got to be close with family, made the most of his NIL deals, and has positioned himself for a chance to do something good in both football and off the field. All in all, may have had a somewhat disappointing career at Miami, but he's not a bust, and he's gonna be a winner in life. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to let me know down below what you think. Let me know what quarterback or player I could cover next, and be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about what went wrong for Van Dyke in 2022. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.